first slide? Yes. All right, good. So I'm going to talk about one of my favorite plants tonight just for a few minutes, uh, the yew plant. Um, and most of you probably know what a yew plant is, but you can see a, a nice close-up picture of the branches of a, one of the yew plants in my yard. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of yew, but pretty much they all are the same color green, except you can see down in the corner there's uh, kind of a, a new cultivar that's kind of golden color. Um, but mostly a yew plant looks just like you're seeing right now on the screen. So I'm going to start with a bit of botany for everybody. Um, there are really two kinds of yew plants, two different genuses of yew plants. Um, the primary one is the taxus, and that is uh, something you see a lot of around here. Uh, the, the two main species in the taxus genus are the English yew or the taxus baccata, and that's known for being an ornamental uh, shrub, and the Japanese yew, which is known to be a pretty hardy shrub. And a lot of the things um, that you'll see in our neighborhoods here in terms of yews are uh, hybrid or crosses between those two uh, to get the, the best properties of each. Those are called intermediate yews. Um, a Hicks yew you've probably heard of, that's that's a kind of intermediate yew, and that's pretty common around here. So um, a lot of different kinds of, of those kinds of yews. Um, they range in height from two to 20 feet, so you can get kind of dwarf sized ones and uh, some that are much taller. The cephalotaxis is really a yew look-alike. Um, in, in common language, we often hear people talk about the plum yew, and that's what they're talking about. There are uh, some cephalotaxis cultivars that have been trademarked. There's one kind of overly cutely called Utop Utopia. Uh, you may have heard of that. So those are the two classifications of you. And um, you'll see that in each genus, there are uh, a variety of species. There are about 13 in the taxis family and 11 in the cephalotaxis family. Uh, you can see the uh, taxis family includes the Japanese yew, that's the second from the left in the second row, and of course at the top left is the English yew, that's the cross between those two. Uh, in the bottom left is the foundation yew, and that's the intermediate yew, uh, it's commonly called foundation yew, and again that's what we see a lot of around here. So uh, one of the things I like about the yew plant is that it's uh, super versatile. And I just went around, took some pictures in my yard. I, I use it in a lot of different ways, even though I just have a normal size suburban Fairfax County yard. Um, one of the ways I use it is a foundation planting. Uh, you can see that in the first picture. Um, what you can't see is there's a gas meter and uh, hose bib and all kinds of things behind that. So it's really just there to, to hide things at the foundation of the plant of the house. I didn't want it to be a plant that got to be too big. Um, we had some laurel there that um, just bit the dust at some point. It didn't last very long, turned uh, brown and, and went away. So I, I chose you this time uh, to have something a little bit hardier. Um, so that's a spreading you or also known as densiformis. Uh, the next one is really a specimen type of plant. I've got uh, one uh, on each side of a little fencing that I have around my air conditioning unit. Um, so it makes a nice specimen plant, just kind of stands out against the white fence. And the final one I use for screening, that's a Irish U or a pencil U. Um, that uh, screens a, a patio and grill and everything behind that. And those are about as tall as they're ever going to get. Um, the specimen plant there and the iris here are both vestigiate, which means they are columnar in form. So that's uh, the shape they take. Um, it, for those yews, the, the iris yew that are the, the pencil yew, I used to have arbor, arborvita there. Those did not last long either. They um, really did not like to be covered with snow, flopped all over, the deer ate them. Um, uh, um, uh, the pencil yew has been a much better choice. I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, so 
You can also use your U plants in just plain old garden beds, as you see on the left there. Um, or as a ground cover, there's uh, prostrate U. Um, the left is a taxis, the right is a cephalotaxis. Uh, but the, the prostrate U is just a very low growing uh, ground cover um, that I use to fill on kind of a spot that I don't want anything high, um, you know, over more than 18, 24 inches. Now you'll see on the um, Texas on the left, when I zoom in here, a few little brown needles. Uh, that is nothing to be concerned about. You just shake the plant, those come off, but that's just kind of part of the natural life cycle of a U plant that it will develop a few brown needles toward the inside and those are gonna fall off in senescence and um, again, nothing to, to be concerned about. That's just normal. Some other reasons I like uh, the U plant is, first of all, it's evergreen. Um, we have a lot of things that go gray here in the winter or the leaves fall with deciduous trees. And the U plant, like some other plants around here that are commonly used in yards, is a nice evergreen. It just stays looking like that all year long. So uh, it's also a shade tolerant plant, which um, I know many of us have pretty shady yards with the uh, large trees we have in Fairfax. Um, what you can't see in this picture that I've shown here is, although it's got a little bit of sunlight on it when I took the picture, um, it is in a very shady spot. It is underneath a huge maple tree next to a large uh, pyrus plant um, right up against the north side of the house. Um, and that plant was here when I moved in 25 years ago and I've pruned it back a little bit uh, now and then but it's pretty much looked like that the whole time. Um, so it's something I really appreciate because it tolerates the shade unlike a lot of other plants which need quite a bit more sun. Another um, feature of the U plant is the texture contrast. I have lots of plants with regular old green leaves around and the U plant um, with these fine feathered blades um, really adds a nice texture contrast to, to some of the other plants we can have our, our landscaping. And finally, it's a plant. Um, I, I would I mentioned that I've had that U that's in the picture about 25 years. I've got to believe it's about 50 years old based on where it is in the landscape and the, the huge tree that is right in front of it. Um, and it just keeps on looking good, decade after decade. So I, when pulling this presentation together, I did a little research and it turns out that according to numerous sources, the oldest tree in Europe is a yew tree. It's in Scotland. Um, and um, people go to visit it, visit it. They've had to, to wall it off because people would kind of steal limbs and branches from it as souvenirs, which obviously wasn't good for the health of the tree. Um, I've seen wildly different estimates of how old this tree is, anywhere from 2,000 to 9,000 years, um, you know, 7,000 years, give or take. Uh, so uh, it's very, very old, uh, but it just, you know, is an example of how long lived you can be. I like you also because it's very carefree. Um, it is not fussy about soil type here. It prefers a little bit of, of acidy or acidic soil, um, but it really isn't too fussy about that. It tolerates a wide range of soil moisture levels. Um, the tree on the north side of my house, like I said, is under a huge maple tree. It never gets rain um, and it never complains about it. Um, it won't self-seed. Uh, like, for example, burning bush, which grows little plants everywhere. It's not an invasive plant. It doesn't require um, really ever um, being fertilized. Um, so, for, so for all those reasons, a very carefree plant. Pruning also uh, makes it easy as a, um, a landscape plant. I only prune the U plants that I have when I need to shape them or, or reduce the size a little bit. Um, in the, the pencil yews that I showed earlier, the Irish yews that are very tall and skinny, what I've been trying to do is prune in the center because the centers have been thinner 
the outsides have stayed pretty bushy and I just wanted to promote more growth in the center. So what I've been doing um, in the last few years is clipping the tips of the U branches inside the trees. And you can see from these close ups that when I clip the tip of a branch, I get two new tips growing. And uh, over time, I think I'll get the insides of these trees to fill out pretty nicely. Also in my yard, I have these features. Just kidding. Um, but um, if you've gone to formal gardens, you've seen lots of different um, topiaries uh, made out of U plants. Um, if you want a hedge, you can easily um, prune you by shearing them into your head shape. Um, you can also hard prune you plant. Some of the uh, houses that were built um, in the first half of the last century in this area, um, the big old colonial homes might have, um, when they were built, uh, been surrounded by fresh young you plants, which are now can be very old and scraggly and um, um, just not very attractive. So you can hard prune a yew plant back. Um, unlike some other conifers, this, the yew is pretty forgiving of pruning and it's gonna start to, to grow, even if you cut back really um, deep into the bush. Um, the best time to not prune is in the hot uh, summer and early fall months. Another reason I like the yew plant is because it's pretty pest resistant. Um, it can attract a couple different um, insects. Um, you might have seen on some yew plants, usually in the crook of a branch, some um, white massing. Um, that usually is the, uh, the millibug or the cottony taxis scale. You can pretty much ignore it. It's not going to do much harm to your plant or you can uh, spray a, a, a hose uh, toward them and wash them off or use an insecticidal soap. So I started off uh, at the beginning by talking about the two different kinds of you, the taxis and the cephalotaxis, and that is really important uh, when we talk about deer. Deer are a problem for a lot of homeowners in this area, um, including me, and um, if you go to a good garden store and say you want you, they will ask you if you had deer, and if you do, they will, they will recommend the cephalotaxis. Those are generally considered to be uh, deer proof. Um, the Texas plants are listed as something that the deers prefer, but I, I'll have to say I've never had any deer touch any of my ewes in my plant in my yard uh, ever. So. Um, I'm not sure if the deer really like uh, taxis or not. At least they don't might like mine. So I'm doing something right there. So what if your U turns brown? Um, can happen. Um, if the whole thing turns brown um, in the course of a season, probably, then you're going to want to suspect that it's waterlogged. You, uh, you, is tolerant of dry soil and wet soil, but it cannot stay in constantly wet soil. So if you've got heavy clay and you've planted the U plant in an area that's at the bottom of a hill or that otherwise tends to stay pretty wet, um, it may not survive and the whole thing may just turn brown and perish. Uh, if you have brown on the top or just one side of your U shrub, uh, you may have placed it in a spot that is way too sunny. Um, they are tolerant of sun and shade, but if you have a plant that's out in the bright sun all day long with no shade, um, there is the risk in, in a hot summer, especially in our area, that the, the yew will be scorched. If there's just a section of the um, yew, a side of it that is brown, then it may be that it was sprayed by some uh, errant uh, herbicide. Um, or there could be salt uh, from uh, winter road treatments. Uh, if there's just a branch of a yew coming up from the bottom to the top that's brown, then that could be a sign that, that you're developing some root rot, um, which probably over time will uh, take the whole uh, yew plant down, uh, or it could be just stem dieback. There could have been some kind of um, infestation on a branch that might cause that branch to um, turn brown. 
if the branch tips are turning brown, that's probably um, just a result of you know somebody bumping it or um, um, some kind of winter damage uh, where some snow bent the branch off. So a few other things to say about you. Um, you'll see here, I, I, I mentioned it's not a native here. Um, it is native in other places. Uh, the English U, for example, is obviously native in England. So it's, it's not beneficial for our pollinators here. Um, it is a source of food for birds, um, although I, I never really see birds sitting on my plants. Um, I don't have a lot of female plants. You do have to have a male and a female U plant if you want the berries to develop. Um, you'll read in many places that U is a toxic plant and some people say, well, I don't want a U if I have a dog or a cat or other pet because they might um, chew on it and then might um, be injured uh, physically from that. I don't know how that common that is. I don't know anybody that's had that problem. Um, you might want to keep that in mind though. And then finally, um, the male U plant produces a lot of pollen and uh, that can be a problem for people who suffer from allergies. So just uh, to close here, a couple of resources you can see on the screen uh, from our uh, Fairfax County Master Gardener website and uh, Virginia Commonwealth Extension uh, publications. So with that, I will turn it back to Tori.